I'm Carrie with Say Lake Film News, and thank you so much, AD and Aaron, for both coming in and both coming down from New York uh, for the Dallas premiere of Sweet Sweet Lonely Girl. Now we were talking earlier about you premiering at Fantastic Fest down in Austin, so mm -hmm. I know you're not not new to Texas. We're glad you joined the Texas film scene. Oh. <laughs> how you. did Fantastic Fest go? Like, how was? I always wonder how is the big world premiere once you um, push it out there. Aaron, do you want to It was amazing. That? Yeah. It was so fun. Um, yeah, it was, it's such a neat group of people um, at Fantastic Fest and here. It's, it's just a quirky a, crew. Yeah, <laughs> it's great. It's a very welcoming group. So. So, go ahead. Oh, I, I, I love the festival. I had a film there in 2015 called The Missing Girl. Mm -hmm. So Sweet, Sweet, Lonely Girl played a year um, last year, last September. And I just find it just, it's really nice because you're among genre fans. And uh, it's a cool mix of uh, some industry people, but mainly these great fans of horror, sci-fi, fantasy, and strange cinema. And, <laughs> Absolutely. And it's just like nonstop, you know, kind of enjoyment of that. So. And so at Fantastic Fest, you guys are just kind of, you guys are mainstream at Fantastic Fest, but here you're a midnight special. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. I loved the film. It totally creeped me out. So for our good friends at home who aren't here with us, haven't seen it yet, Erin, can you give us, no spoilers, just a quick little synopsis. Creepy, gothic romance, a lot of fun. Um, I play Adele, who um, goes to live with her aunt in a very creepy old Victorian house mm -hmm. um, that you don't know what um, if if it has any kind of a supernatural element to it, or what's going on? But things start to happen, um, and her aunt is agoraphobic and doesn't leave the um, the bedroom anymore. Yeah. And so um, she sort of starts to go out into the town, and she meets Beth, who um, becomes her good friend. But drama ensues. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> It was really interesting because 10 minutes in, I had this thought, and then Beth's character actually said the line. I was like, this is so Jane Eyre. Oh, really? Yes. What did you think? Oh, the Jane Eyre. And yeah, the, I was and like, the... this is totally Bronte. Like, it's dark, yes. it's creepy, it's mysterious. You know, it might be supernatural, but we're not sure. Yeah. That really doesn't become clear until later yeah. on. Yeah. So, okay, so when did you guys meet? Have you worked together before? No, this was the so. first film we, we met through our casting director, Nina Day, mm -hmm. so. All right, so tell me where this story kind of came from for you. Did you, are you a fan of, you know, Victorian era literature? I thought that was interesting too, when they said, it's a Victorian house, I was like, ah, oh, fun. <laughs> I get it. Yeah, I love atmospheric kind of gothic horror and gothic romance. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, cinematically, I'd say the influences were, um, kind of a blend of some art house drama films sure. that were uh, what my producer, Mike Ryan, likes to call uh, female doubling tales, mm -hmm. like Three Women, uh, the Altman film, Persona, mm -hmm. um, uh, more recently, My Summer of Love, mm -hmm. with uh, the Emily Blunt film, and Heavenly Creatures, yes. uh, which is a great, great film. Uh, so I took my love of those kind of relationship-driven uh, quasi-female thrillers and blended it with um, my love of just at, um, 70s haunted house type horror films like Burnt Offerings with Karen Black and Betty Davis and Oliver Reed. Uh, a great, great haunted house film that takes place largely in a house uh, and there's an agoraphobic aunt in that film so there's definitely homage to that film in, in Sweet Sweet Lonely Girl. And then uh, Mario Bava's uh, film, A Drop of Water, which one of his, uh, in the Black Sabbath trilogy, mm -hmm. about um, a woman who steals the ring off of a corpse and then the corpse haunts her. Um, so there's like, those, those horror-wise, those two films are heavily imbued in this narrative, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but it's funny, here, as you said, here it's a, it's a midnight film uh, it's it's a little soft for a, a midnight crowd, you know, because it's more like you said, sure. more like uh, Bronte or or that kind of thing, 
and typically we think of midnight films as, as be, being much more visceral and and adrenaline driven to keep you know mm -hmm. so yeah. does that mean Dallas is a little bit more conservative or than Austin yeah. or yeah. Yeah. our southern counterpart <laughs> ah maybe well I think it'll be good for for the Dallas midnight crowd and mm -hmm. hope people can come out for it well I will make a confession anybody that knows me I love movies but I cannot handle horror huh. like I, I, I okay, can't so handle you too. blood yeah okay so how did you get into this movie well, it was I me, mean it's yeah. we did discuss it's not maybe visceral I don't know if uh, it's not gory right yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a huge thing for me I, I have a hard time watching things that are gory and just blood in general like I can't watch any kind of like documentary about totally doctors right, or yeah. something totally so right, it yeah. was really refreshing to be like a part of the horror community but not in that blood sense gore mm -hmm. sense um it's neat to be a part of that yeah okay so I have to ask you about the scene that made me jump out of my skin and I'm okay so I was babysitting my infant nephew and I'm a terrible auntie I know it <laughs> I was holding the baby, putting him to sleep. He's got his bottle, and I'm watching the screener. And, you know, it, there's a lot of soft music in Sweet, Sweet Lonely Girl. You know, a lot of it's very peaceful, you know, serene. And, you know, he's drifting off to sleep, and I'm settling in. And then there's the mirror scene <laughs> where a little mirror gets uh -huh. slid under the door. And it's a jump scene. And I jumped, and the baby jumped, oh, and threw no. the bottle in the air. Oh, no. And he shook for about 15 oh, seconds. I felt like sorry. the worst person in the world. I'm sorry, I so wish I won either, you. <laughs> either I've totally scarred my poor innocent nephew, or he's going to be like the biggest horror fanboy <laughs> of all time. I'm not really sure which one it's going to be. So uh, tell me about how that scene came to pass and I'm how that developed. You know, it's funny. I've kind of grown to dislike jump scares because I think they're overused. I, I, I've kind of been guilty of that myself, and I feel like that one uh, is less manipulative and kind of earns its place. Um, uh, it's that one too, as I'd say, pays tribute to the M Night Shyamalan film yes. Signs, where the Mel knife. Gibson is uh -huh. using the uh -huh. knife, which I I love that moment in Signs, mm -hmm. and I think it's a one one of the best scares out there. Um, so deliberate nod to that, um, and um, yeah. So I hope I answered the question. Yeah. I enjoy lo like closing my eyes at that moment when we're in the theater and listening to the audience reaction. <laughs> That's awesome um, because it's pretty awesome. And at Yale, we did a screening up at Yale, and um, literally two women actually screamed. <laughs> yes, yeah. it was great. Mission accomplished. <laughs> I enjoyed that. That's it, awesome. You know what's funny about it too is I think back when we were shooting that. Um, I wanted the Adele and Bat's reaction to be pretty real. So we did a few takes where uh, we had Zach, our AD, on the other side of the door. Um, I'm not, I don't want to ruin it for anybody that hasn't seen the film, so I'll try to like <laughs> keep specifics to a minimum. But at one point, uh, I like screamed during at, at to the get moment us. to get us yeah. to get everybody, <laughs> and everybody jumped. How'd that work for you, Aaron? It worked really well. It got a good reaction. And then I actually, my voice is actually uh, woven into Susan Kellerman's I voice in that moment, that. just to give it a little more oomph. <laughs> That's you know? so interesting. So, From the uh, moment when you screamed on set? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it's in there. You can hear so it a cool. little bit. And Susan Kellerman is Aunt Dora. Yes. Mysterious. Creepy Aunt Dora. Totally. Yeah. And right. she still hasn't seen the film. She's going to see really? it in Brooklyn. Well, I, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to give specifics of that away. Uh, but she'll be seeing it soon in New York, in our New York premiere. That's so really I'm excited exciting. excited to show her the film. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about where you're headed next. You said Brooklyn. Do you guys have a trajectory for distribution? Like, where can people learn more about it? Where yeah. can they see it? It was just announced that the film is... A, um, a Shutter exclusive title. So Shutter is the horror, the new horror streaming network. Not, I mean, they've been around a little bit, but they're somewhat new a horror streaming network from AMC, mm -hmm. and, uh, and they have amazing titles up on on their site, and it's very curated, and they have like very cool like curated sections, like if you want haunted house films or films about uh, I, I don't know 
female-driven horror films. They have really cool curated lists, uh, and um, they saw the film at Fantastic Fest and kind mm -hmm. of. Uh, it came it came out of that. So they're releasing the film in May. So we're really excited about that. Mm -hmm. And um, on our website, sweetsweetlonelygirl.com, uh, there's a bunch of new laurels of international fantasy festival fa uh, genre fantasy festivals, where the film will be playing in, in the coming month or two. And I think we're going to be going to uh, Germany for fantasy nice. fantasy. Film Fest Nights, which plays throughout all of Germany. Uh, Birthplace in April. of Horror Films, Germany. Yeah, but there we're not a midnight screening. There we're, <laughs> we're like totally a, mainstream. 3 totally p.m. 3 p.m. Pe people bring their little kids. Awesome. <laughs> and they, with snow cones. Oh, no, boy. I'm only kidding. <laughs> Uh, sort of thing. You're talking to the girl who just confessed to, oh, well, just feed the baby while I'm watching oh, this. I'm no big deal. Uh, okay, so about birthplace of horror films like as we're talking more and more like snaps to some of the old horror movies or not even old horror movies like I was thinking about the ring with the corpse and I thought oh Crimson Peak um, like Guillermo yeah. del Toro yes. and then you said the night I'm so glad that I was right about the knife under the door because I thought yeah, about yeah, the totally, same thing totally. the butcher knife under the door in signs okay so I'm trying to think of more spots now where it reminds me of hor different horror films <sighs> Well, I he gave us a list to watch before really? I even got oh. to um, to set, which was neat. Okay, and, so what's on the list? Well, I don't know if it's Match, Fac Match Factory. Oh, Girl yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Totally, Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's just it's really interesting because it's about a, 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 a girl and it was it's Finnish. Uh, Finnish. It's Finnish. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it, it, it has a lot of references to that. Like okay. visually and also the storyline. I say Match Factor Girl, because mm -hmm. you guys have got to give me some to watch. If there is yeah, horror out film. there that um, pansy me can uh, handle. Well, you totally, know, totally can totally handle it. Totally. Yes. Um, it's kind of in, it's about as much horror as, say, Heavenly Creatures. I mean, the others. Sure. Uh, no, that's Peter Jackson, right? Peter yes, Jackson. Yeah. Yes. Museum. Uh, I liked Crimson Peak. That was a cool gothic horror film. Yes. Yeah. So, but yeah, Match Factory Girl's not really horror, no more than. Uh, heavenly creatures it's although yeah. it's strange and it's beautiful and it's just a great character study mm -hmm. uh, I think Roger Ebert might have had it like it was one of his favorite films of like I don't know all time or within or that year uh, <laughs> but he loved it so and, and it's great and I I first encountered that film a few uh, you know about five years ago my editor pointed it out to me it's short it's like a 68 minute feature mm -hmm. and uh, it's about a lonely girl who lives with her parents. And it's on YouTube, I think. It's on oh, YouTube? Really? Cool really? Wow. Yeah, I think that's okay. how I found it. It's definitely worth um, checking out. It is. It's really cool. Okay, so I've got one last question before we go and I'm totally switching gears here, so sorry about that. <laughs> but as we were talking, I was thinking about, I was like, okay, you know, we're referencing like Crimson Peak, like Signs, and um, of course the miniseries uh, Feud has oh, been yeah, on lately yeah, about yeah, the making cool. of Whatever Happened to yeah. Baby Jane. And I just want to give you guys a huge shout out for, you know, horror and action have kind of long held the reputation, and probably rightly so, of female characters just being more of a prop than anything else, just yeah, a visual yeah. device. And to have female characters that are so fleshed out and so 3D and mysterious, and in some cases very scary, and having that be the turning, you know, where a film turns and moves mm. forward and moves back, I just, I appreciate the work. Oh, Me too. It's you. interesting that yes. he can write women so well and mm -hmm. two female characters so well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, so we definitely hope to see more from you at Fantastic <laughs> Fest and at Diff as well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. It was an, an honor to be here. It's my first time in Dallas. You've been oh. here before. I've been right? in the airport, but this is my first oh, time. Oh, this outside. this is definitely a nicer part than the airport. The airport. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Well, thank you guys again so much for coming. Hope you have a really great time. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs>